All right, we're back. We're on number eight. Here we go. Once again, this is unit seven. This is worksheet four, number eight. So we're solving for x. So in this case, x is an angle. So that's going to be what we call my reference angle, my theta angle there. Um, this, then we're going to mark the sides that have the numerical values um, as opposite leg and adjacent leg. So you can see that 29 is a leg and it's the opposite leg because it's across from my theta angle. 14 is a leg and it's the adjacent leg and the reason why it's the adjacent leg because it's the leg that is immediately next to my theta angle. So using my definitions of sine and cosine and tangent, let's move this over here so you can see it a little bit. Okay, sorry, I gotta do a little bit of adjusting with the camera. Okay, we have opposite and we have adjacent. Opposite and adjacent, this tells me I'm gonna use tangent to solve this problem. So I write down the abbreviation for tangent, which is T-A-N. Now I'm gonna set up my equation. And the setup of the equation, you always format them the same way. Write the angle next to the abbreviation. In this case, the angle is x degrees. Sometimes it's a number, but it can be a variable like here. Then after you write the angle degrees, put an equal sign. And then to the right of the equal sign, you're always gonna set up a ratio, a fraction. And for tangent, it's opposite leg, which is 29 in this case, over high adjacent leg, which is 14 in this case. Okay, so there's my equation that I'm gonna use to solve for x. So at this point, what we do is we take the fraction 29 over 14 and we turn it into its decimal equivalent simply by dividing 29 divided by 14. So its decimal equivalent is 2.0714. And when you're doing these sine, cosine, and tangent problems, always carry the decimal four numbers past the decimals for accuracy purposes. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to refer to our chart, and here's my chart and I'm looking under the tangent column and I'm trying to find the decimal 2.0714 and if I can't find it exactly, I'm gonna get as close to it as possible so you could see that right there, 2.0503 is as close as I can get and that correlates with the 64 degree angle so I'm gonna say that X is equal to 64 degrees. Okay, now that's not 100% accurate, but we're not looking for the exact answer. We're just looking for the wholest number that, the wholest degree number that that would be. Okay, number nine, we're gonna follow the same idea as number seven and number eight, because we are finding X, and X represents this little tiny angle right here. So that angle right there is gonna be my theta angle or my reference angle. Okay, so let's look at this side, 12. Well, that side is a leg, and it's opposite my theta angle, so I'm gonna put an O there to tell me that it's opposite. And then the side where the 54 is, it's the hypotenuse, because it's crossed from the 90 degree angle. I'm gonna put an H right there. O and H, which definition uses O and H, O and H right here. This tells me this is a sine problem. So I'm gonna write down the abbreviation for sine, which is S-I-N, and then I'm gonna set up my equation write the angle next to it, which is x in this case. Sometimes it's a number, but once again, this is a variable. Then we put an equal sign, and then on the right side of the equation, the equal sign, we set up a fraction. The sine fraction is opposite leg, which is 12, over hypotenuse, which is 54. Okay, and that's my equation that I'm gonna use to solve for x. So now my next step is I'm gonna take this fraction and I'm gonna turn it into its decimal just simply by dividing. So 12 divided by 54 gives me a decimal of 0 0.2222. Okay, and then I'm gonna to refer to my chart um, under sine and I'm gonna look for the decimal 0 0.2222. And if I can't get exactly to it, and you can see I can't get exactly to it, but I can get pretty darn close, so I'm just gonna correlate that with 13 degrees. So in number nine, X is equal to 13 degrees. And if we're really good, we put the squiggle equal sign. So that's saying it's about 13 degrees. It's not exactly, but we're approximating. Okay, number 10. Here's my reference angle right here, my theta angle. There's the X. Um, where the 25 is, that is a leg, but it's the adjacent leg. So I'm gonna put an A for adjacent leg. The side where the 40 is, that's the hypotenuse because it's across from the 90 degrees, so I'm gonna put an H. So using the definitions, which one 
um, utilizes A and H. A and H is a cosine problem. So I'm going to write down cosine. Set up the equation. Put the angle next to it. The angle is x degrees. Put an equal sign. On the right of the equal sign, set up your fraction. Cosine is adjacent leg, which is 25 in this case, over hypotenuse, which is 40 in this case. So there's my fraction. That's my equation that I'm going to use to solve for x. My next step to solve is convert 25 over 40 into its decimal equivalent by dividing. 25 divided by 40 gives me the decimal 0 0.625 and then the decimal ends. There's not a fourth number here. If you want to, you can put a zero there. Okay, and now I'm going to look under the cosine column and I'm going to try to find the decimal 0 0.6250. So you can see on my chart, here's my cosine column. I'm looking for 0 0.6250. And you can see I can't get to it exactly, but it's pretty close to that. So the angle that correlates is 51 degrees. So number 10, x is approximately 51 degrees. Okay, so that's how you would do number 10. Moving on, number 11. All right, so I'm still using sine, cosine, and tangent in these problems. In number 11, my theta angle is right here. It is x. Um, 10 is the opposite leg, so I'm going to put an O there. 22 is the adjacent leg, so I'm going to put an A there. I'm going to write SOHCAHTOA here, write the definitions for sine, cosine, and tangent, always referring back to these. You have to have these, def these three definitions memorized, and if not, it, these problems will be a complete train wreck for you. All right, so what do I have? O and A. O and A correlates with tangent. So I'm going to go tan, put the angle, x degrees, put an equal sign, and then put the fraction, O over A, 10 over 22. Okay, so there's my equation. Now I convert 10 over 22, that fraction, into a decimal. 10 divided by 22 becomes the decimal 0 0.4545. 4545. 4, 5. And then I go to my table of trigonometric ratios. I look under the tangent column and I'm looking for that decimal, 0 0.4545. So you can see I'm following tangent down, looking for 0.4545. I can get close to it, but not exact. So I'm going to correlate that with 24 degrees. So x is equal to 24 degrees. OK, so I'm going to stop right there because I've hit the 20 minute mark um, for both of the videos. And hopefully you can figure out the rest. All right, have a good day.